Good morning, this is a Sunday morning update on Tropical Storm Ian. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone and making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center for the best latest information for where you're at. So taking a look at Ian's satellite imagery for this Sunday morning and we can see that the system really has not become any better organized since last night since the persistent deep convection has really gone away and now we're really left with pretty much a mess right now with some percolating deep convection surrounding the center. Some of these storms fire up, then they collapse. New ones fire up, then they collapse. And so this is really a struggle and highly uncertain um, forecast still as far as when this is going to rapidly intensify right now. A closer zoomed in view on this clearly shows with what I'm illustrating here again with some of the deep convection that is again not persistent. Again, storms are collapsing on themselves with some even arcing bands, which indicate a little bit of dry air that surrounds the system, as we can see. And so this right now, as it stands, remains fairly disorganized, given that it has winds up to 50 miles an hour. And it's likely because that the system is not vertically stacked. And you can't get a rapidly intensifying system if these two are not vertically stacked. And that's probably what we're seeing this morning. My best guess would be that's why. We can confirm this by looking at two recon missions that are currently flying through the storm over Ian. And we can see that the pressure has not dropped since last night at 1,003 millibars. And we can see that the system is still lacking a well-defined center. We do have a low-level center. They have located it, but the thing is, we have winds that are coming in out of the southeast here. Then they sharply curve around out of the northwest. Then they loop sharply kind of out of the south uh, northwest and then to the southwest. And so this, again, we are seeing uh, perturbations of vorticity of swirls. So the system is not really well structured, at least at the surface, that would likely allow this to rapidly intensify and that's why, again, we're seeing these kind of blobular looking thunderstorms, some banding futures at the very most of organization by best um, that is um, indicating to us that the system is not really ready to rapidly intensify yet. Here's the Air Force mission, noting that the winds are only up to about 30 knots on the eastern side of the circulation. So winds are even weaker on this particular mission of the Hercules Air Force C-130 aircraft that has made its pass through the system. So what's the National Hurricane Center saying about this system? Well, as of right now, it has winds up to 50 miles an hour, moving towards the west-northwest at 12 miles an hour. But again, if this is gonna become a major hurricane before it gets to Cuba, still remains highly uncertain. Because again, if this does not get organized by today, then one could even argue that it's even a major hurricane on the approach to Cuba and then it could struggle quite a bit in the Gulf of Mexico because of the deep layer shear and dry air that is forecasted by all of the global and computer models that that's going to be the case before this moves onshore of the Big Bend of Florida by Monday or by Friday morning that is and then arriving into the, um, the, the Cuba area by Tuesday morning and Tuesday afternoon. Therefore, hurricane watches have been posted for Western Cuba with tropical storm watches issued for Central Cuba with a hurricane warning, believe it or not, for the Cayman Islands. But again, it will really have to depend if this thing could actually intensify rapidly, which we have not seen any evidence of that occurring this morning. When we take a look at our most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds and its probabilities, we can see for Western Cuba, there is now a 80 to 100% chance of tropical storm force winds arriving into that area by Monday evening. But again, this could be narrowed down quite a bit, depending on if we even get a rapidly intensifying system in the first place. And then moving on to the Cayman Islands by Monday morning, so that is literally tomorrow morning, um, some of the tropical storm force winds could get there. And there's only a 10 to 20% chance of that occurring. Actually, the closest island 
has a 50 to 60 percent chance of tropical storm force winds when we take a look at the hurricane force wind probabilities we can see there is a 50 to 60 percent chance of hurricane force winds over western cuba uh, in the next couple of days and then eventually getting into the gulf of mexico near the big bend area with a 5 to 20 percent chance of hurricane force winds in the next five days the key messages for tropical storm ian as follows you all need to read this it's very important i'm only going to read a few or else this is going to take forever as we have a lot more to cover in this video so this video doesn't end up being like 20 minutes long but i will read the first one for you all so i um ian is forecast to produce very heavy rainfall and in, in uh, instances of flash flooding and possible mudslides in areas of higher terrain, particularly over Jamaica and Cuba, flash and urban flooding is possible with rainfall across the Florida Keys and Florida Peninsula through midweek. Additional flooding can uh, on rivers across northern Florida and parts of the southeast cannot be ruled out as well. Hurricane and tropical storm conditions are expected on Grand Cayman beginning early Monday. Again, hurricane conditions if that is if um, we can get Ian to rapidly intensify. This is a look at the latest intensity forecast from the National Hurricane Center made by Forecaster Brown. We can see the initial intensity is at 50 miles an hour. It is very hard to believe and to argue if this is going to even be at 65 miles an hour in their next complete advisory. But nevertheless, it could be at 65 and then approaching 105 miles an hour in 36 hours and then only approaching 140. Actually, I shouldn't say only, but um, pretty strong on this category four in three days. But again, that will really, really depend if if Ian can rapidly intensify, get that vortex vertically stacked in the favorable environment with low shear, high upper ocean heat content in the ocean, and a lot of moisture. Again, things are failing here this morning, and so it's really, really um, to be questioned if we're even going to get a major hurricane out of this at all. And that comes with the uncertainty that I will explain in this next section of the video. So when we take a look at the latest GFS model for this morning, and again, this is the latest numerical forecasting from the global forecasting system model. And we can see that the system right now in the next 36 hours is only down to 977 millibars. If we go back a couple of model runs, we can see that the system looked a lot more promising, a lot more stronger. And we can see at 969 millibars, um, at the same time, this is 18Z Monday, showing a 969. And then when we go back another um, frame here, another forecast, 976. So this is definitely not only speeding up, but it's also a lot weaker versus where it was going to be in the first place. So again, there's been a trend to a weaker storm on the global forecasting system. And this is no surprise when we look at the European model here in just a second. 962 millibars going past the western tip of Cuba. A couple of model runs ago, we were looking at 930 millibar system passing western Cuba. And this was in pretty good agreement with the hurricane models. And now only showing this dropping down in 943 millibars now in about three days. So if we look back again at a forecast, 933 millibars, and then the previous forecast had this at 935. So it's trending east again, and it's weaker, just like we were uh, looking at. And it's partially because we had a G4 Gulfstream aircraft last night and doing several passes and collecting a lot of important data to help the models better forecast the system. And there has been a notable big improvement with the GFS today going further east because of that new data, which seems a likely scenario that this system, again, is going to struggle, I believe. And then going all the way out to day five, making its way onshore as probably a, a high-end tropical storm or a low-end hurricane. When we look at the latest European model, again, this is the operational numerical forecast. This is a lot different scenario, much weaker, a lot more conservative. And this is probably one of the reasons why my intensity forecast right now is really uncertain and I'm being conservative myself. So we can see 
um, in about 36 hours, only 996 millibars, okay? And then only strengthening to 989, maybe 990 millibars over Western Cuba. And we can see this really shaping up actually 983 millibars in about 60 hours. So again, even the year of uh, the Euro model is not really going crazy on this. And usually we would have really good agreement among the global models of this intensifying. Sorry, the images are loading. The website on Tropical Tidbits is running ridiculously slow this morning because a lot of traffic hitting the website and so we can see that the system, 960 millibars in 87 hours. So it's going to be a struggle here and then um, only intensifying to 956 millibars. Now that while that is stronger than the last run of the European model, it is still one of the more weaker ones out of all the global models that we have this morning. The two only bullish models that we have is the HWARF and the HMON model, which I will take you through very carefully. And so we can see that the system, assuming that it can get better organized, it's going to have winds up to about 55 to near 60 miles an hour. And then by this afternoon into the evening hours, we might even have hurricane force winds on the system. But again, that is only going to depend if we can get Ian to get an inner core going to rapidly intensify. But as it stands right now, that looks a little less likely given the fact that we have a, a lesser defined system than what we were going to previously have. So when we go forward here, passing Western Cuba, we can see that when, uh, air pressure is down in 948 millibars. Remember, it was going to be 930-ish millibars here. Um, if we just go back a couple of runs, 931 on the previous model, and then on the previous one before that, 937. So it's definitely weaker on this run because we are we are assuming that there's going to be rapid intensification. So every model from here on out might get just weaker because this is the time that it's supposed to rapidly intensify. So going forward here, 936 millibars by Tuesday afternoon in about 66 hours in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico and then remaining at that intensity all the way up to 90 hours out. So there is still some possibility for this to rapidly intensify. But as soon as it gets into the northeastern Gulf, it's going to encounter a lot of wind shear and dry air. And the system is likely to weaken on the approach to Florida. And again, if this is weaker to begin with, when it gets into the Gulf, say it's at a category one or two, then it could be a lot weaker, may not even be very impactful at all for Western Florida if it moves in this general direction. So when we take a look at the HMON model, this is a different model that illustrates a different scenario. So we can see here, let me zoom this out so you all can see a little bit better. Okay, so this is the HMON for 06Z. I know the time and date is not on the very top. That's because this is a little more narrower and the format's a little different. So I do apologize by that. So this is going to rapidly intensify on the HMON apparently. So we could have a hurricane here again by this afternoon. 18 hours, we would have a hurricane with pressure down to 982. Really hard to believe right now if that's even going to happen. And then getting close to Cuba right there at 944 millibars. Remember, if we look at the last run, 933 millibars. And the run before that, it was also even stronger. Um, let's see if this is going to load on us. And it doesn't look like it's going to load. Very slow website today. And so we can see um, 11 millibars weaker. And it still gets down at 927 on the HMON, but really, really bullish. A very bullish outline model, I believe. Uh, on this cycle and then it tries to maintain that intensity of pressures of 932 millibars at least through the next 84 to 90 hours as it approaches Florida but right now look at this this could be a very weak system approaching Pensacola or Panama City Beach Florida at only 995 so a very weak system as this is going to likely really fall apart due to very 
deep layer shear of right around 50 to 60 knots. So here's a look at the latest intensity forecast from the RAL or the Tropical Cyclone Guidance Project and we can see that still calling this to become a mid-grade category 4 potentially by all of the models with some only indicating that this is going to become a mid-grade or high-grade category 3 hurricane in the next 60 to 96 hours. Fortunately though I'm going to remain very conservative on this forecast and people don't like when I'm conservative. I know that for a fact because I talked with several people last night on Discord and my forecast right now, given the fact that this is um, not really responding very well to the environment yet, it's not really taking the advantage. My intensity forecast has been lowered from the last one, and now I only forecast this to become a, a 115 mile an hour hurricane. So a much weaker system um, and well below all of the intensity guidance, even below the National Hurricane Center. I'm not doing this to under hype. I'm not doing this because I don't want this to become a category four. I'm doing this because there is such um, high uncertainty in the model guidance. We looked at the European, that only calls for a high grade category two hurricane perhaps. And so I'm really not confident that this is going to rapidly intensify as quick as what most of the models indicate. And so therefore, I'm only forecasting a 115 mile an hour category three hurricane. That is barely a major hurricane in about three to four days. And this could be a little too high given the fact that this is struggling. We probably have more better agreement among the track guidance than the intensity guidance this morning. And we can see where this is likely to move right now over Western Cuba. But again, this could shift further east again. We just saw that on the last couple of runs from the GFS and from the European model, all kind of coming into agreement that there might be a landfall somewhere over here near the Tampa area of Florida, maybe the Big Bend, maybe St. Pete, as well as maybe Ocala, Florida. But it won't matter because there could be some significant impacts. And if this were ordered to move further east, it might avoid some of the shear so more than if it went further west. So um, yeah, anyone in Florida really needs to still be paying a close attention on this as most of the guidance here still has more than enough room to move further to the east than say to the west so it looks like louisiana right now does not look to get impacted at all by um ian at all for right now most likely it's going to avoid that area but for right now it looks to be the florida area that ne definitely needs to be keeping a close eye on this for sure if you found this weather information very helpful make sure you smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future updates but anyways i will see you in the next one peace